low prices, equaling miles of smiles for you. During Ram Power Day, Spotify saves you over $13,000. Smiles! Over $13,000. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. Only as direct. It's used as a Terms may apply. We're going to do chapter 13 if we're seen beyond time. Here in the slave farm known as America, the people farm. Today is September the 15th, 2018. 915 2018. 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 5 is 15. Plus 2 is 16. Plus 0 is 16, plus 1 is 17. Wait, I think I did that wrong. 9 plus. 1 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 2 is 17, plus 0 is 17, plus 1 is 18, plus 8 is 26. Once again, today is 26, 2 plus 6 8, the infinite, the H, the hatch, the head, the 12 o'clock of the El Lord, of the, the Logos of Light of Life. G is 7, O is 15, D is 4. Add those up. The gematria of G-O-D, straight up ordinal English reduction, is 26. The number of today. Good day to read the 13th Consciousness, Chapter 13 of Foreseen Beyond Time. Spiral Ritual, Spear Ritual. Unwinding and winding, forever and ever and never. It's interesting too that chapter 13, the 13th consciousness, begins on page 103, which is equivalent to 13, because 0 is none. 1 plus 3, 4. As I've already said, 13 has everything to do with the cosmos and with you. 13, number of the moon and the sun, sun 12 positions on the ecliptic. The sun is 1, going through the 12, the months, the house of the zodiac. 1 plus 12, 13, and then the lunar calendar, 13 moons, 28.5 days. Oh, I didn't really pick a very good spot here, this parking lot, on this Saturn's day, because there's lots of, lots of consumer slaves coming up and parking here. Well, I don't, why don't we go, um, let's go over there. <laughs> this spot sucks. A little bit of a momentary delay in Foreseen Beyond Time, Chapter 13. I don't want to be uh, surrounded by all these uh, slave puppets. <laughs> um, I don't mean any offense when I'm saying shit like that, you know, but I don't mean to be mean or nasty when I call Americans slaves. I just, I'm just being truthful, and it's not personal. It's transpersonal. All this shit's beyond, way bigger than us. It is us, but it's way bigger than us. So if you're offended when I say Americans are slaves, you know, so be it. Because we are. We're enslaved by money. I'm not trying to be mean or nasty. Or negative. People use the word negative all the time, routinely, without really knowing what they're saying. Like, when I've told people at work that uh, the odds are against them in the raffle they get to do for bringing their own bags in, we get to get a prize. Oh, you get to win to a raffle, chance to win a $25 gift bag. Uh, you shouldn't need a incentive or a prize to do the right thing, right? Yeah, a lot of, and there are quite a few customers who recognize that and don't do the raffle for that reason. But, uh, I've said, I say, um, yeah, just put your first name number on there and in the unlikely event of your victory, uh, we'll call you. Or you'll, you know, you'll be called in the unlikely event of your victory. And a couple of people have said, oh, don't be negative. We're, we're, we we're gonna win. We're gonna win. Uh. It's once a week, and the box is full. The odds are against you. It doesn't mean you're not going to win. And it's not being negative. That's being truthful. 
being truthful is not being negative, it's being positive. It's having a pos pure position, a purpose, and, <laughs> you know, it's just, times are utterly nutty, folks, ladies and gentlemen, why? And if you, the, if you can, if you can look in the mirror and admit that and deal with it, things have become different. You're not trying to uphold a, an illusion and a delusion anymore. You're not wasting all your energy suppressing and repressing the truth of the situation. And the truth shall set you free. Truly. It'll piss you off. It'll fire you up. But it'll set you free. You, know, you can get free dome, free mind, and you can come into these temples and realize what it means, why these are called the temples, the temporal lobes. It's because the temple is where you go to worship the light of life. Not, and worship doesn't have to mean, uh, let's, let's, before we go to 13th consciousness, let's look at worship, which can also be used as worship. All of these words are swords, double-edged, and they, uh, you know, they can be used for positive, they're neutral until wielded by the wielder, the will of the wielder. I was just going to read from the 13th, uh, chapter 13, and now I'm going and getting sidetracked. Worship, noun, reverence and homage, especially to God. Two, religious services. Three, a title of honor. Verb, one, pay divine honors to, adore God. Two, love or admire inordinately, inordinate, inordinately, inordinately. Verb, perform or attend religious services. So it has several different death phonetions. Uh, and the ship, warship, W-O-R-S-H-I-P. Right underneath worse, worse, compound of bad, ill, badly. So is it appropriate for us to worship God? Well, I would say to have reverence is always appropriate for that which is beyond. God is a, an intelligible sphere whose center is everywhere, but whose circumference is nowhere. Everything and nothing at the same time. Alpha, Omega, Alpha, Beta, soul and body. Incomprehensible from for the linear guy over here interactive or communal in the right hemisphere and then and down the corpus callosum this is where you get to know the, the one 13 October 2007 page 104 foreseen beyond time the 13th consciousness in heliocentric terms the earth and the moon were conjunct in the 20th degree of Aries Mercury had begun its retrograde motion in Scorpio, and the moon mirrored exactly the alignment of September 30th, 1307. 700 years after the arrest of the Templars, the Master of the Light touches the crown of his watch to bring up the crystal screen of his space star timepiece. It is a bright autumn day. On the screen, he observes a woman carefully lift an old weathered scroll from the shelves of the Vatican's secret archive. She is holding the Chinon parchment. The document exonerates the Templars, absolving them of the Vatican's false accusations against their order. The Chinon parchment explains in detail how the Pope is obliged to ask the Templars for pardon for his crimes against mankind. On October 25, 2007, the Vatican published the Book of the Trial Proceedings against the Templars, once more falsifying the context of the murders. Professor Barbara Frail, researching the secret archives of the Vatican in Rome, housing the stolen wisdom of the ancient world, opened the Chinon parchment. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It's Chinon, C-H-I-N-O-N, Chinon. The Vatican could no longer delay the release of crucial source documents relating to the disappearance of the monks who had activated and financed the meta-consciousness when they were massacred in Paris. This is proof that the Templars were not heretics, said Professor Frail. The Pope was obliged to ask pardon from the Knights. Unquote. Why had the Templars been arrested? 
The question had preoccupied the world for seven long centuries. The French monarchy reacted to the power of the monks by triggering a true blackmail mechanism, which urged Pope Clement V to reach the ambiguous compromise ratified during the Council of Vienne in 1312. Unable to oppose the will of the King of France, Philip the Fair, who imposed the elimination of the Templars, the Pope removed the Templar order from the reality of that period, without condemning or abolishing it, but isolating it in a hibernation for 700 years, thus deleting the wisdom carriers of the cosmos from the collective memory. The Master of the Light reinstated this memory into the consciousness of mankind when Jupiter passed in line of Pluto over the galactic center in December 2007. The relevance of the document cannot be understood in terms of the faked trial proceedings of 1313, which took place to hide the real intention of abolishing the 13th consciousness, as taught by the Master of the Light in the Atlantic Oracle. On November 3, 2013, 11:313, during the annual, the annular, during the annular total eclipse in the 12th degree of Scorpio, with Master of Time Saturn in Scorpio in line of the Southern Cross constellation, a young Nepalese woman picks up a smooth, clear crystal tablet. The disc-shaped plate activates at the touch of her hands. The crystal comes aglow with an indigo blue light, reaching from the crystal's surface. The powerful hieroglyphs communicate their eternal meaning in their own language. The Master of the Light stands watching the young woman read the tablet of the ancient voyagers of time. The light, enco the light encoded words come al came alive. Eons before our recorded time, before sacred and secret knowledge was passed on by word of mouth, hand signs, or written symbols. A civilization existed that evidenced the likely presence of superhuman intelligence, more advanced than yours will, will be even in centuries to come. Seated by star beings, this land known as Atlantis flourished everywhere in space-time before the last ice age. The great occultists of that ancient lost and sunk, sunken world of Atlantis are believed to have crafted the zodiac system that forms the basis of the art of astrology, the science of ancient civilizations from outer space. The creation of the zodiac goes back far enough in time to a period when the origins of its signs and symbols coincided exactly with the respective constellation positions in the heavens. Scholars consequently estimate the zodiac was invented five million years ago during a time beyond time. The star travelers of Atlantis, voyager, voyagers of time, created symbolic creatures to illustrate the meaning of the zodiac. They invented legends and myths to help us understand and remember the symbolic content. They also incorporated the, zodiac, the zodiacal system into symbols and projection holders known later as tarot cards as an additional method of divining and understanding human nature. They knew that when a spirit descended in, into material existence, it incarnated through one of the twelve signs of the zodiac, each ruled by a particular planet or wanderer, as they called those heavenly bodies that were not fixed, as for instance the bright star Sirius, or the constellation of Orion, the hunter. They had a complete understanding of each of the 200 fixed stars' energy and meaning. The divine order of a celestial hierarchy did exist once upon a time. The law of analogy as above so below is a wise teaching bequeathed to us by the ancient voyagers of Atlantis who had a remarkable understanding of humankind and cosmos. They took the concept that man is made in the image of creation as literal alchemy. They maintain that the universe was an organism not unlike the human body, and every phase and function of the universal body has its correspondence in man. Therefore, to the wise stargazers, the study of the stars and astrological alignments was a sacred art, a secret science, and serious business. They were seers with total psychic recall and a complete understanding of destiny. They knew that the overall geometry of alignments reflected the medical and energetic health of a civilization. Namaste, hallelujah, Hare Krishna.